Thank you very, very much, Nick, and thanks for, uh, for getting this show on the road. Um, I've been doing open source for a fair while. Um, I'm mostly known with the uh, GeoServer project, but in the last year I uh, joined a new company called GeoCat, and their primary business is not built around the open source software stack I'm comfortable with, but is uh, built around this software stack called GeoNetwork. And so this slide presentation is what I really wish was available to me when I first uh, started looking at this project. Um, so this is a GeoNetwork orientation talk, uh, and I'm just doing an overview of what this, uh, of what this software project is about. Uh, I'm a developer, so I will peek under the hood a little bit and see what makes it go. Um, and then I'm also an open source developer, so I'll actually look a little bit at what the community does, how it ticks, um, and yeah, just kind of see what we're up against here. So uh, my employer is GeoCat, um, focuses on publishing data uh, with uh, primarily government clients. Uh, it's a small, passionate open source company um, based in Bennekom, uh, which is a nice village uh, next to a university town in the Netherlands. Um, yeah, uh, my name's Jody Garnett. I am, uh, as I've got a strong history with the Open Source Geospatial Foundation. I'm currently the incubation chair and uh, work on a couple projects like GeoServer and GeoTools. Um, but I'm new to GeoNetwork. Um, that last slide doesn't list any GeoNetwork experience. Why should you listen to me about this project? Um, well, this is the presentation, as I said, when I was first looking at the project, this is the presentation um, that I wish I could find. And so this is often some of my notes as I come to terms with GeoNetwork, what it does, who it's for, and, and honestly, how do I make it go? Um, as an experienced open source lead and incubation chair, uh, which helps teams do open source, I also wanted to dig a bit deeper. Who were the companies or the customers behind this thing? What is the community like? In terms of the project, how mature is it? Do they take good care of the code base? And then finally, is this technology anything special? Is it something we can write in Python in an afternoon? Or is it this kind of collaboration of experts uh, that's best cultivated cultivated by joining and trusting the team. Um, so yeah, let's have a look at Geo Network and first impressions. Um, so the first place I go with the project is I'd like to look at the website. Um, this website's nice and clear. It states the primary purpose, searching for spatial data. Um, I'm actually pleased to see the Open Source Geospatial Foundation uh, logo in the corner. Um, being part of a vendor neutral body is really uh, good. It mitigates the idea of vendor lock-in. Um, sometimes you can join an open source project and really it, and find out it's just controlled by one company. And if you're not an employee, you can't uh, take part as you're on equal footing. Um, it also means that the team and the project has been through an external review. Um, so it's more likely to be run in a fair uh, and even-handed manner. Um, However, seeing open source in the title is a bit odd. Is the project so old that open source was a feature? Or is it like the commercial version um, where they're holding back functionality for people who pay? Um, so uh, after a bit of um, reading, I did find out that the original Geo Network was actually a, pro a project by the United Nations Food and Agriculture Division. And they were excited to like, share, share an open source version of their project um, back in 2006. So it's, it's, the, it's the earlier case where open source is a feature. Um, the next kind of obvious thing is what's up with this logo? Um, it, you know, the logo is not very clear. Uh, and I talked around to the community. Um, we can obviously see that it's wrapping a globe. And then they've got this little metadata monk symbol where he's kind of like this meditating on the Zen of abstractions and metadata. Uh, and then if you look sideways, I'm expecting to see everyone turn their head sideways on the video feed here. Uh, you can see that it forms the letters G and N. There you go. I like this participation. You thought you could get out of it by staying at home, but no. Uh, 
Okay, so the next one here is just trying it out. So installation and setup. This is actually really important for open source projects. If you download something and you can't see it go in like 10 minutes, you're like, um, you know, you're gonna go off and try the next thing. Um, yeah, I really like this aspect of open source because it is one of the places where uh, we do usability really well. Whereas commercial products, if you paid thousand dollars or ten thousand for something you're probably going to spend an afternoon to install it um, open source we we have to move a little bit quicker so digging into it there's a quick start but the quick start was shocking to me it assumes we actually had Jew network installed already i'm like oh no um, looking around in the manual i found a maintainer's guide which had some installation instructions um, they weren't very good or easy to follow. So until I update the docs, this presentation is some of the best um, guidance you'll get. So there's a number of distributions. Uh, there's an installer, uh, there's a web archive, because this is a Java web application. Um, one thing I really liked is that installation instructions from source code um, that warmed my heart. Uh, and then Docker, which um, kind of warmed my brain. It means that I could try things out pretty quickly. Um, it is a Java web application. It uses OpenJDK 8. Um, recommend using the one that comes with your Linux distribution, uh, or if you're on Windows or Mac, adopt OpenJDK is a, a nice way to get that. And this project doesn't support Java 11 yet. So the first one I tried <laughs> uh, was a Java installer. I downloaded this jar. I double-clicked the jar to run. I had to argue with permissions for a little bit because that's a terrible idea. And um, I eventually just ended up running it on the terminal. Uh, and what popped up was this beautiful little like Mac Aqua user interface from the late, I don't know, 90s or something. Um, and yeah, it went ahead and started talking me through agreeing to the GPL license and so on. And, was really adorable, but it didn't set something up and I was able to run. Um, the other official uh, distribution is the web archive. So kind of download this and run, um, and you can install it in your Tomcat application server and it just kind of goes ahead and works. Um, yeah, so that, that went pretty much as expected. And then the source code was pretty good. It uses a build system called Maven. Um, so you could check out the code base and run Maven install, skip tests because nobody wants to run tests. Uh, and then you could ask it to run on the command line. So we've had a great question come in from uh, Max Stephen. Uh, when will it be support? When will Java 11 be supported by Geo Network? That's a good question. For the longest time, they've been held up on the GeoTools library, which I'm on the steering committee of. Uh, we were able to update to support Java 11 uh, with a funded code sprint maybe like a year and a half ago. GeoNetwork has just updated to this version of GeoTools um, in the last three months. Um, so when this future release comes out, that'll be our first chance to try testing in Java 11. Uh, but as of now, we don't really have a, a funding or a time commitment to work in Java 11. So a to be determined, but at the very least, now it is not roadblocked. Good question. Um, the next one, uh, which actually had the nicest instructions, was running from Docker. Um, the instructions were a little bit awkward, so if you just start running, uh, you will, can run GeoNetwork, but then you can't talk to it. So just be sure to map port 8080 uh, when you run Docker, and then you can get through and talk to the service on it in its web browser. Okay, um, moving on. Now that we had something running, I could finally start the quick start. Um, and uh, that was considerably more smooth. Um, so just starting the application up ends up with a, a nice kind of blank screen and there was nothing to search for. So it was pretty boring. Signing in as administrator, I could go through and start to customize a few things, give it a, a, a title and name and so forth. And then they had some buttons to load some sample data. Um, yeah, so once I had 
actually data loaded, we can look at the next part, which is actually trying out this project and what it does. So what does it mean for a visitor to come to a GeoNetwork website? So going back to the website for a moment, GeoNetwork had a nice clear description of its purpose, searching for spatial data. I was also personally surprised to see creating a map uh, as part of that story. So usually folks want to find information and then use it in a desktop or a web GIS um, environment, uh, but GeoNetwork actually lets you find information from several sources and preview a map, um, kind of like a web portal or, or something. Uh, technical, a bit of research shows that GeoNetwork uses OpenLayer 6 under the hood um, for its map viewer. And it uses something called OWS context or WMS context, which is a standard that's used to describe maps across different projects. So you can make your map here in GeoNetwork and then load it up into a desktop client. Um, so kind of interesting. Um, there we go. The next thing we can do is we can start to search. Uh, so they have this option of searching by topics or facets. There's these little buttons we see along the bottom. Uh, or we could start to do a free text search up at the top. And that was pretty good. I was able to do my general uh, search using text, typing something in. Um, and then finally I was able to like review and view a records and it popped up a little screen and gave me a nice uh, presentation of the information that was recorded about a data set. Um, and this is an example of the kind of information that's stored inside GeoNetwork. And in this case, the record was a small zip file containing a document. Um, but that document had some spatial content in it and um, a bounding box and so on. So we could see a document that was associated with an area, I think, in Russia for this one. Um, there's a great amount of detail here, um, citing the different data sources that were used in making the map and so forth. And then what was fun for me is they also had the option for having an add to map button um, next to this data. So this opened a little open layers viewer pulling information from all over the place. Um, and we can go ahead and uh, add in the data from this catalog or we can start to upload our own spatial data into this uh, map viewer. Okay, and then we were also able to download the map when we were done, and that would download one of these context files, which we could load up into another application. So in this story, GeoNetwork is a catalog. It's managing thousands, hundreds of thousands of records. Visitors browse and search through this content. Um, some content is stored in the catalog directly. It's like uploading the document into the database. And then some of the content is on external documents or external web services. Um, the other aspect of this is it's a map portal. So you can use these maps to visualize the spatial data. Just to let you know, Jody, five minutes to go. Okay, I'll step it up. So to answer who's GeoNetwork for, this is for groups that are uh, managing their content. So that's what GeoNetwork offers visit visitors. The rest of this page is all about the care and feeding instructions for these data custodians. It's got really strong support for editing and publishing records. Uh, also goes through and looks at a bunch of different system and security configuration. Uh, and this was fun for me, harvesting records from other catalogs. Um, so if you've got like a, a state catalog, your national catalog could go ahead and collect all that information and publish it. Okay, so this really helps your team, if you're managing data, know where their inf your information is and what information is used within your organization. Um, or if you're sharing your information with the public, it helps you uh, make that information discoverable. Okay, I'm going to along here. Uh, if you're a data custodian, you can have some default templates uh, to help get you started. And we can go ahead and add a new record. And this pops up. Um, this pops up a metadata editor, which we can use to fill in all the details. Um, and this editor was kind of difficult to use, but it's a difficult subject matter. Um, 
what was really nice is this lets me completely in a GUI edit all the um, all the details of what is usually an XML document. Um, so I found it much easier than writing these by hand. And then we also have this option of harvesting from a web service. So in this case, I was able to point GeoNetwork as a, a WMS and run it, and it would make a little blank uh, metadata record for each one of the layers from my web service. And then I could review that and fill in more details. So this was really nice. So technical approach, um, kind of under the hood. Um, sorry. It uh, uses the Spring framework. It stores everything, all the settings in a configuration database, a little Hibernate H2 database by default, but in production, you're going to use uh, PostgreSQL or Oracle or something uh, a bit more industrial strength. Um, authorization is via Spring, so you can uh, pull it in, you can hook it up uh, with whatever uh, security system your organization uses. Um, yeah, so back to the open source side of things, um, they do provide an API, a, a, API uh, uh, out of the box, so very developer friendly with lots of um, support for uh, programmatic access. They also talk about how to customize and extend. So you can teach Geo Network how to work with the uh, uh, metadata records in your organization. And then it has all the open things, open standards, open source, open development. Um, yeah. So here's a picture of some of the internal components of Geo Network. And what was nice for me from a um, developer's perspective is they're using a lot of normal Java things. They're using, um, you know, a, an application server such as Jetty. They're using Spring to wire everything together. Their user interface, there's a strong split between the front end and the back end. Uh, their user interface is Angular and Bootstrap and open layers right now. They're looking at what their options are for Geo Network 4. So, Technological takeaways, clear architecture boundaries, uses the popular Spring framework, and I can see evidence of maturity. So there's been an investment in the code base. Um, as an example, they've been experimenting with changing their searching from Lucene right now to using Elasticsearch in the future. Um, also with those strong architecture boundaries, they can swap what database is used for storage or even swap where they're storing their um, attachments and thumbnails, for example, S3 buckets. Um, there's heavy use of XML technologies, as we would kind of expect. Um, so they're using XML schema to define the document structure and then schematron rules to make sure it makes sense. Uh, and then each standard is represented in a, in a repository called Metadata 101, which attempts to be vendor neutral. Um, so not specific to Geo Network. Uh, and I really wanna say that they really went all in on the XML stuff. So they actually generate that editor on the fly from the XML schema. So typically this technology is used to process a record into HTML or into PDF, but they actually used it to dynamically make the HTML editor on the fly. Um, moving on here. So who makes it? Just um, one minute to go. Pardon? One minute to go. That's a good. So they do talk about their community and their license. So they are being open source right up front on the tin. One thing I also like to see is they talk about the professional support and the organizations that are behind it on the tin. So they also talk a little bit about uh, where the money comes from um, and that points to the project, keeping its um, open source sustainability in, in the wild. Just a couple examples. My own government here in Canada makes use of this for their federal geospatial portal. Um, the national uh, kind of cadaster registry in the Netherlands makes use of uh, geo network. And then this is the original kind of geo network one from the United Nations. So I really hope that the UN can see the benefit of making this project open source because now 15 years later, they can upgrade um, and see where their technology has gotten to. So thank you very much for that.
Great. Hi, Thank you very much, time. Lady. Great. Yeah, that's great. So we've got a, a few questions that have come yep. in. Um, uh, so firstly from Bahad Dar, apologies if I got the pronunciation of your name wrong. Can you connect your network to your spatial database rather than loading the data sets? Uh, I'm not quite sure I understand that. So uh, geospatial, uh, geo network can um, store its configuration and its records in a Postgres database, but its job is to know where your information was. So you would connect GeoServer to your geospatial database to publish a WMS service, and then you would document the WMS service in GeoNetwork so people can find it. And then you would also describe the data products that are being published in GeoNetwork so people know what the data means. Does that help answer your question? Um, uh, yes, Baha suggests. So thank you for that. Um, we, another question from Nick Austin. Uh, how does it handle tags, et cetera, for searching? Uh, and then also, is there a read-only viewer for enterprise users, so non-custodians? Um, both, both good questions. So I believe the tags are kind of pulled out from the metadata record, and they are just identified for very quick searching with those facets, um, uh, just as kind of a, a nice to have kind of categories idea. But often people are doing the more deep search into the, in through to the metadata records. The second question was the read-only viewer. It is also dynamically generating those um, one or more views uh, using XSLT transforms. So people can make you know, a very nice summary view and then a, another view that goes in and shows more technical details maybe for a, a specific uh, data scientist. Does that right. help? Yeah, okay. yeah, I think so. Um, one other question uh, from Faha again. Uh, also, is the new metadata standard, so ISO 19115? Yeah. Right. So, as an engine, GeoNetwork is neutral on the different metadata standards. And so, if I go to this Metadata 101 plugin repository, I can see ISO 19139, but I can also see regional variations um, and updates. So, like the North American profile of that standard is there. Um, the Australian ANZLIC profile of that standard is there. So you'll see, um, you'll see lots of organizations around the world using GeoNetwork, but also collaborating on their, how they are collaborating on these standards together. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, thank you. No, that, that's a great answer. Um, uh, well, one other question. Uh, you mentioned very early on the importance of documentation for open source yeah. projects and uh, particularly the, the quick start guide for, for Geo Network as being a, an interesting example. How do you think we get across the importance of documentation to, um, well, to whoever we need to communicate that to? Um, often this is brought as a trouble to the developers. I know this is a, a developer lead, but it is really a, an area where we try to engage with our community because one reason I could write this presentation now is because I was new to the project. Once I know how it works, I wouldn't be in a position to, to explain this quite so clearly. And it's the same thing with installation. Uh, we really need to engage with folks while they are installing for the first time and before they know what Apache Tomcat is or before they know ISO 19139. Yeah. So this is really a good area for the entire community behind an open source project to work, uh, to work together. So, yeah, I, I guess that's what I want to say to that. Team effort. 